Hi chums, okay. Right, you can blame Mike Walt and Alan Simpson for this because they've been keep they've been jumping all over my jumping all over my head trying to get me to do videos and I've finally suc succumbed to the pressure. I'll tell you what it is, folks, I'm, I'm very nervous. I'll talk about gardening all day. We'll see if you put a, a wood turning chisel in my hand. I, I don't think I should really be doing this, but I'll give it a go. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square off some wood. Now, the reason for that is because I'm sending this wood to America, okay? It's going to Carl Jacobson because Carl did something very, very kind at the time my sister took her life, and he, he, he sent me a gift, which was really really generous of him so i want to try to pay back a little bit of that you know so i told him i'd send him some you now there's no point in me sending you that still has all the bark on because it's all different shapes and for instance if you look there's a piece of you there okay there's no point in me sending this to carl because he's going to cut that off in the band saw so that's extra weight which you pay for when you're posting so i would much rather send carl a couple of extra pieces then send him the, these pieces with extra lumps on them that he's going to cut off anyway so what I'm doing is I'm I'm, I'm truing the blanks up okay so this is one of them this is about what this, this is a pretty big piece actually um, let me just see now I, had, I should have had my tape out what 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 is that um, I'm trying to find out where my camera is right so it's about three inches in diameter where are we three inches in diameter so okay and it's uh i'll do this in in americanism because it's going to america it's, it's about nine inches long so it's a nice i get a couple of nice wee boxes out of that maybe or i don't know a wee, a wee bug vase or something but this is what i'm doing now i'm also doing something else here um if you notice the ends are I've left my centers in both end because that means that Carl can put it onto his lathe exactly where I put it, had it squared up for him on mine. And then I've also rounded off the shoulders here, as you can see, because that helps stop checking. Um, wood doesn't like sharp corners. And you'll notice that a lot of the top turners would say, I'm just taking the corner off this. A lot of that's to do with stopping it checking. So if you take the corners off, it helps. Now, you can see here, there's a little tiny check here and it's about a millimeter but a millimeter deep but i've just flooded that with super glue so that'll be okay but you checks anyway however my wood turning mate michael has started just routinely cleaning up blanks as soon as he gets them as wet wood because he has found that when you take all the pressure off the outside the inside tends not to split now you can see what he's talking about if you look at this piece here the pressures on this part here are going to be different because it's thicker than it is up here. So it's not going to dry evenly because the wood's going to be thicker at this part than it is, say, at this part here. So it means that it's drying at different rates. Whereas Michael has found by rounding off the blanks and squaring them up, they, they dry more quickly and more evenly. And he's I did a whole load of Christmas trees recently, not one of them checked, and you will check, that's, that's almost a certainty, if it's not properly dried. So, uh, and even when it is dry, I just love to check, because the grain goes everywhere in it, you know. It is beautiful stuff, it's well worth the hassle, mind you. So this is what we're aiming for here, a blank something like that. Now, I'm going to show you a wee thing about center finders. Center finders are brilliant for everything but finding the center. Okay, and I'll show you why. Here's, here's your center finder, okay, on, on the wrong side, okay. So we're going to get a fair approximation there, okay, off the center finder. You can see, if you look at that wee bit in the center there, you can see that the center finder is basically, that, that edge is rotating virtually on that center there that I've marked. But what do you see the other end? It's this end here. Um, if I bring it in, if I bring it over here, you can see, you can see all the scores I've made on it. Now, there's where, there's the center, according to, I get a, something to point here. There is the center according to the center finder. Okay, where is it? There. All right, that's a rough approximation, but according to me, the center is there. 
And the reason for that is because if we look at this side of the log, you can see that it's much thicker from here to here than it is from here to here. So if we mark where the centers are, if we just take where the two centers are, right, this is my center here. Where is it? Right, there's my center coming over. Okay, it's coming over the log and it's basically going to run straight down the center of the log, okay? But if you take the other center over here, which is only about half, a, about, a, about six or seven millimeters away, if you take that center, you can see that that's going to run down the side of the log. And you can see how close it is to the edge. So it means that this air gap here, which is going to be the ghost, this is going to be the ghost when you're turning, but this gap here is going to be equalized over here. So you're going to lose all, you're going to lose about a couple of centimeters of thickness on this side because you've put your center over towards this side. So by using this part here, a center finder on this piece, you're going to get a, a center that's not true according to the rest of the branch. So it's okay up here where there's, where there's no gnarly bits, okay? But where there's a gnarly bit, you have to find your own center. So look at the way the, 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 the thing's running and then basically you forget about that part that's behind the thing and take your center from there across. Where is that? Okay. So try to find your center by ignoring the big lumps in the side because that would leave you more wood on this. All right. Now, now the scary bit, we're going to line this thing up. Uh, just get rid of some of this rubbish. Right. What am I using for this? I'm using a stab center because I like them. That's it there. That's a one inch. I think that's a one inch. Hold on. We'll do our, we'll do our measurements again. We, may as well. we all we all like measurements that way. Um, what do we see? What is it? Oh, it's not. It's um, it's just over one. It's one. It's one and a quarter. Okay, so it's one and a quarter, and it gives you a nice purchase on the end of the log. But what it means is those teeth. Where are they? Those teeth will go into the log and drive it. But if I get a catch, I don't put it so tight that it binds. It allows the wood to spin against the against the teeth, and it means that things aren't so bad. They're a great thing for learning how to use a skew. So, there's another wee thing I was taught by my engineer friends. Um, Morse, like okay, there's your Morse taper, which is designed to fit into the equivalent sleeve in your headstock. Now, I used to take me Morse tapers and set them in real gentle. Okay in case I damage them, but my mates, they, you push them in hard to get them seated and then they don't spin around and look, that's not coming out, I have to knock that out again so you get a good grip. Then I'll just line up on the, the centres that I've given, put on here. I'm going to have to fix this camera again probably because it's slightly out of position maybe. I'm just tighten that up till we get a nice purchase. Uh, that's it. That's going to hold. If it, if it doesn't hold for me, I'll, uh, I'll change. I'll just, just tighten it more. I'm going to change this camera slightly, folks, so you get a better view of what's going on, okay? Well, if I can see what's going on myself, it'd be a good idea. Oh, it's the wrong way. Right, so do I need to bring that in closer? I'll just see if it would help. Eh? And that's out a wee bit. That'd be okay there, wouldn't it? Right, that's okay there. Right, so I've got that tool close on. I find that a little bit of wax, no wax polish you use on your bowls and your, your. We're just we're just missing there, but it's not just not missing enough for my liking. New wax polish that you use on your bowls and goblets and stuff. You put a wee drop on your lathe bed. It makes your banjo slide about much more, much more easily. Right, now I'm getting nervous now, you see, because um, I'm about to turn the lathe on. And I'm, I'm just terrified that something's going to jump out and not be ready, you know. I'm just double checking all my, all my levers and stuff here to make sure I'm okay. Um, I'm very lucky, I've got, uh, I've got variable speed in this lathe now, since it changed to three phase, so that's pretty good, you know. I hope the light's okay, I think it's not too bad. Um, I've got a 100 watt bulb here. Where did I get that? Ha <laughs> ha! The old fashioned 100 watt bulbs. Um, when, when I was clearing my mother's house out, she had a big box of these bulbs. 
from years and years ago, she, when they told us we weren't allowed, allowed to use them anymore, she went, I'll be using them. I went down and bought loads of them in the local stores. So I've got loads of 160 watt bulbs, which will do me my lifetime, I'm sure. So they're not the most economical, but they're certainly give a lot better light. Okay, where's my face mask? Right, over here. Right, folks, um, so please be, please, please know it. I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really, really nervous about this, okay? So I'm just checking if all my buttons done up and all, and my sleeves are back. There's a great coat here. Um, Larry, Larry might recognize this. I think it's like his. Mark's Workwear in Canada, about $5, and it's a, I've been wearing this for, I'm sure I've this coat 20 years. Well, 20 years. 15 years anyway, and it's, it's, it just keeps working, just keeps going and going and going, you know. Right, so that's that. Right, here we go. Mask, whoop, mask down, and I'm going to be, going to be using a one, one, and a, one and a quarter inch roughing guys for this. So just bring it up to a nice comfortable speed, which is not vibrating too much. Folks, all, what I was doing there was I was going fairly easy because I want to get the high points off first so that I can get the tool rest in closer and go a bit faster. But you can see here, there's why I want to get this big lump off the side because there's all sorts of stuff going on inside it and that, that just causes checks. So this is not going to be as big as it was when it started because it's a fairly gnarly piece. But we'll see what we get out of it. If it's not good enough, it won't be going to America. It's as simple as that. I'll keep it and do another one for Carl. So we'll get the face shield down and go again after we move our tool rest in slightly. Not ready yet. There's a wee bit of vibration going on because this isn't true yet. So I'm getting, I've got stuff sitting around here on on work on benches and stuff that I needed for this little demo. And I'm just going to move a wee bit here now. The bits of wood and stuff. You know. the, um, I'm going to show you something here now. I've come to the end here, okay? But this is big. This is bigger, obviously, than this piece. But I've been using the the, the roughing guys in this, uh, going this direction here from left to right now. I don't want to come on to the work from this side because if I do, I'm not, I don't have a bevel to catch on or I don't have a bevel so I can get a catch because this is all gnarly so it's all coming around at different rates so you don't know where, which bit's sticking out and which bit isn't now this end here isn't just so bad so an experienced turner could probably come in from this end with, if they were careful because they know that it's all uniform so you've got a fair idea where the bevel is going to be, but you're still not riding a bevel. There's always a possibility for a catch. So I just routinely go from one end to the other, but I never come in from an end. So to do this end, I'll be going the other way and I'll probably just change hands because it's a lot handier than using my right hand, you know.
Right, we think we look to see where we are now. It's still not ready yet. You can feel it in my hand here. Right, so we're getting there. We still have to take a fair bit off to get rid of this piece of bark here, but we'll do that now. I'll just move my tool wrist in a little bit more, and that'll give me a nice distance to work from. Right, here we go. Now, the reason I'm stopping here is just I'm going to lower my tool rest slightly, just a couple of millimetres, because I'm just a wee bit high and I don't feel comfortable, so that's, that's okay there. Do this, don't keep working. If it, I, one of the best tips I ever got was from a guy who was teaching this gym when I went to the local college to learn about seven or eight years ago now. God, it must be eight years. And... Uh, he said, one of the things he said was, if it doesn't feel right, it's not right. And that applies to anything, but it really, it really applies here. So you know yourself if you're going to do something wrong. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't feel right, you just stop and watch, look at what you're doing and try to find out what that is. Well, that didn't feel right for me there now. And my problem was I was scared of losing the bevel then. Because this diameter is reducing, I have to get, bring my tool rest down a wee bit. So be be, just be aware of when the feeling you get. Not not this bullshit about the words talking to me, you know. The um, it's about what you are learning from turning the word, and what ex what experience you're getting. And one of the best things of all is listening to it. They're not listening to the words saying I want to be a goblet. They're listening to the tone of the tool on the wood, because the tone can the noise can indicate that you're getting too thin, or that you're about that you've hit a. a You've hit a space, uh, I'm trying to think what the word for it is, a split. And especially in you, you don't know what's inside the middle of these. I've made a lot of goblets that have smacked, smashed in the middle because there's been a piece of bark going down the inside of the, 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 the wood. So in terms of listening to the wood, it means listen to the noise your chisels are making. And if the tone changes, ask yourself why. Okay, it could be because the bark's coming off. It could be because there's some sort of issue with the wood. It could be that the wood's now becoming loose. I've had that, where I've been working, and then suddenly the, the, the sound changed. And I didn't know what it was. And when I stopped, the wood, I realised that it had come back a wee bit here, that the tailstock has slid back a wee bit, because I hadn't locked it down properly. So beware of that. So I'm just going, I've just got two rest down a wee bit. Just another double, wee, another wee check. Right, that's us. We're away. And we'll get this shown the road. That's about two, two and a half thousand there. That doesn't, that doesn't feel too bad now. There's something going on up here, but it may be just a, wee, a little bit of uh, where branches coming out, you know. Yeah, that is. Now, what I'm going to do here is, right, there's a little hole here about two millimeters deep. Now, I didn't see that when I started working here. I'll just feel it and see what if there's anything interesting going on. No, that's, 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 that's fairly solid, okay? Now, I'm not going to take that off because if I reduce the diameter here by another two millimeters or three two millimeters, that's taken four millimeters off it. Okay, so that's a sixth of an inch. So I'm going to leave that because when Carl gets this, he can cut this in half. He can then reduce that down and then keep this bit as a thicker piece. Right. I'm just looking around the rest of it here. There's no other splits. Look, see this stuff here. 
See the, the markings and stuff? Whenever Carl gets this done, and you get, I don't know, what is that red there? I don't know what colour it is, but it looks reddish to me, or pinkish colour. When, 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 when Carl gets this, um, he'll be astonished when he sees the colours of it. It's really beautiful. Now, next week thing, just for the sake of, if this was for me, I wouldn't do it. But I'm going to do it because it's going to Carl. I'm just going to stabilise these little bits here with some super glue. Because I don't want, I don't want them to split if possible. So it means I have a chance to talk now because I've waited for the super glue to dry. <laughs> Never dries when you want it to, does it? I think that's safe enough there. Right, let's go around here. I'm going to put a load of super glue in this as well. Soak all this here. What will we do without our super glue, eh? I just leave, I'm going to leave that there now because that's fairly well flooded there and I'm just going to take some just to keep that help that go off a bit better I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to leave that like that for Carl and then he can take that he can just clean that up himself but just just so that the, the, don't want all the glue to run off down onto the lathe you know we want to just keep some of it on the, on the, on the actual work See, it's not too bad like that's, that's, that looks okay it's not as bad as I thought it would be and that's it now one more wee thing I'm going to do um, these, these ends are waxed, but I'm not going to re-wax them because the, the, we want the air, to, we want the stuff to come out this way. We don't want them to come out the ends. But it, there's not the little, little, little hole I made for the centers is nothing. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to square these off, but I'm going to maybe I'll square this one a wee bit. But I'm going to round these over so that um, so they don't split. You've got your sharp edges here, and that's where you're liable to get a split if one's going to happen. So I'll just knock those off again. Just, I'm just going to use a, what size is that? I don't even know what size that is, I use it all the time. About a 3 a three, eighth spin, uh, 3 eighth spindle guards. Still a wee bit wet there, right? That's okay. So um, that's it done. That's it done. Um, as you can see, there's there's two about the same size now, um, different diameters, but they're all going to be different. Now there's a couple. I'm not going to change, Carl. I'm going to send you some of these, which are natural because these are getting fairly light, and I don't. You might want to make a natural edge goblet or something. So these are just a nice size for doing that. So I'll leave, I'll leave excuse me folks, if I breathe instead of speaking, it would have been a lot, a lot more helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a few of these like this. And I've got another couple to, to give you. They're going to be like um, crotch pieces, small crotch pieces, which make lovely little dishes and stuff, you know. So there you are folks. Um, what was I going to say to you? Oh, my camera's all stuck here. Um, I don't know where I am here. Right. The, so that, that's my, my first ever live turning video and I'm still alive. <laughs> what about that? Right, the next one's going to be a little job I have to do for a friend. Um, he wants me to make a couple of these for him. They're a little peg that goes into uh, a chair, a deck chair. Um, I don't know, it's a fussy folding chair. And there's, there's a couple of little different things to do. They're wider at one end than the other and they've got a little step here and stuff. So we'll do that next. Um, whenever I find a suitable wood to do it with. I'm thinking of ash because it's fairly strong, you know. Okay, all the best now. Bye bye, and I hope you, Michael, or Mike and uh, Alan, I hope you boys are happy now. All right, all the best now. Bye bye.